Hello and welcome to the Move Your Business Forward podcast. These talks are hosted by Rob Boll, founder of Evoke Management and CEO of International Leaders UK. We'll be talking with experts from both these companies about issues that affect SME companies today. Today I'm joined by Neil Tusson, who is the founder of Perfect Teams and also International Leaders Industry Expert helping companies with their teams and getting more out of their people. So Neil, great to have you with me on this on this little podcast today. How yeah, are you doing good, today? Good good to be here, Rob. Thanks good, good. For, thanks thanks for inviting me along. You're you're very 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 welcome. So what we're going to do is just going to kick off by just having a bit of a chat around um, teams because I see um, everything that I get involved with the businesses, I think there's always always extra value to to bring out of anyone's team whatever the size of the business or individual teams within a business. And that's what everything you do is about, Neil. It's about how do you get the most out of the team? And I think one of the big things that comes out from ever talking to you is, yeah, how, how do you get up to speed with knowing who's on your team, what their characters are, what their strengths are? Are they doing the right thing? This is something you're really passionate about, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and the short answer is it's really, really easy if you've got the right tool and you know the right questions. So everybody's familiar with um, the Jungian terms introversion and extroversion. I would imagine most people are familiar with that. Essentially, do you process, do you go internally and kind of consider things? Um, that's a good word right now, and it consider that was a, a Boris Johnson word of the weekend. But do you go internal, consider things, or are you just looking for affirmation externally in the world? So it's that internal, external focus. I, I often, I often see when we talk about internal, internal people or introverted people, they, you know, they're not the first to put up their hand or to to shout out and, and say things. And And just you saying that reminds me, it's so important to just give everyone a voice, isn't it, around the table, whether it's in a meeting or or even off the, I think it's the same. People always respond differently, whether it's a WhatsApp group, whether it's Slack, whether it's email, whether it's in a meeting, you know, all these things, you've got to encourage everyone to have the space and comfort to feel they can contribute and talk. And I think some of the quieter people, people that are less vocal or often overlooked, but you know, sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it it adds a massive dynamic. I mean, there's a woman called Susan Cain that wrote a book called Quiet. And really, it's a book that's a triumph for introverts. And she said, yeah, the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking. I mean, that's that's the dilemma sometimes in meetings. You've got this big extroverted ideal where it's got to be the big I am. I've got to push it out there and promote it and project it. And the introverts are just silently sitting there screaming, "Why don't you shut that? <laughs> and yeah. you let me get let me get a word in edgeways." And the thing is, if you actually create space for introverts, they will give you insights and understandings that will just blow the extroverts away. What's your from from all the work you've done with companies? What's the most striking thing that you know, you you've seen a perceived introvert and someone that might not? be able to contribute what have you seen them bring to the table that's really surprised you or surprised the company Um, well I was working with um, the board of a company and there was this big clash between two members of the board one of them I mean what do we do is in a simplistic way is we put people around a clock face so figuratively think of a a nine o'clock space and think of a three o'clock and you've got somebody sitting at nine o'clock and somebody sitting at three o'clock And that's typically a massive clash because you've got this instinctive, expressive energy coming up against this introverted thinking energy. Um, Outside of work, these two were the best of friends, but in work, they just clashed. They had such a dynamic that it was a dysfunctional team. What happens with the process that we go through, it just makes the invisible visible. So you bring them into a space and you say, hey, look, This is what you bring to the equation, but actually this is probably some things that are gonna get in the way of you two working effectively together. And the managing director never ever forgot the the way that we we resolve that conflict. And in fact, actually that's why I got invited back out to Geneva last week, because this was a workshop I did in his previous company seven years ago. And he thought, wow, I've got to bring this into this new team that I'm bringing. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it leaves a legacy when you make what we call the invisible visible. I didn't yeah, say all the cards on the table. 
So what, one thing we, we talked about here is obviously introvert, extrovert, and there's obviously some other, well, I know there's some other dynamics in, in the tool you use and how you describe things. So what, what are the other things that... Yeah, well, the, the other biggest dynamic is the way in which we all process information, and it, it goes down to the way that we've evolved. So there's, we have three parts of the brain. We have what's called the reptilian, the mammalian, and the human cortex. And that deep-seated instinctive level is probably what causes most of the issues because it's just down and dirty fast and quick and it's kind of like yeah the snake bite bang it just gets in there and you put that up against this human cognition which just slows things down and then you've got this familial um feeling space and really they're the bridges it's the people that sit in the field space the red space that actually want to bridge and because they're interested in people, they want to bridge the warring groups between this cognition and this instinct. And you see it playing out all the time. Um, you see a headline and somebody's had to resign because they came out with a quick seat of the pants. Yeah, they, yeah they, they, they spoke before they thought and suddenly they're in a world of hurt and trouble. And it's just the clash of these different worlds, the instinctive, the thinking and the feeling. I, mean, I, I see it running all the time. And what, what you're basically saying here is, you know, people processing information in different ways, people being more introvert or extrovert on a scale, you, you immediately start to see different traits in people, different characteristics. And, and all of those are brilliant if you have them as a combination to solve problems or to, to, to produce good outputs or good outcomes from a team but yeah you, you, have, you have to you have to have all three in play think of a triangle with a red side a blue side and a green side the green side is the instinctive it's it's very where and when think of kennedy's statement is vision a man on the moon by the end end of the decade it's an instinctive headline quick down and dirty statement the moment anybody, any leader comes out with a visionary statement, what happens? Every time around, what have you been smoking? Yeah, what planet are you living on? That's impossible. So you, you suddenly get the doubters that run through the equation to squash the enthusiasm of the initial instinctive statement. The fact is you have to have it all in play. You've got to have the red and blue come into play because it's the red that keeps people stuck to the, the vision. If you can get the people on board, you're probably going to be able to march all the way to the end of the end of the you know the end of the line but then you have to have this blue cognition sitting there the thinking which is actually going to make it happen you know dot the i's cross the t's put the procedures in place but what happens is each of these worlds see each other in both a positive and a negative way they each have gifts that they bring but they've also got challenges and you know, Every time there's a dysfunctional team, every time there's a conflict in the team, it's just these worldviews clashing, the clash mm -hmm. between that quick instinctive, that familial feeling that wants to bridge and make everything, bring all the people together and make everybody happy, absolutely hates conflict. And there's blue thinking where it's all about the intellect and the process and making things right and righteousness. And you, you can straight away when you divide people into those three camps, you can see where the <laughs> yeah. clash out. But you have to have all three in play. If, you, if one of those is missing, it's like a three legged stool. It's all going to mm. fall over. I know. Um... I know from me using the tool and talking to certain companies, it's quite apparent where some of these big challenges come out. You know, I've seen kind of tech companies where you've got the founder and all the people they've hired being very much tech focused and really into the quality of the tech they built. And it, in their eyes, it's brilliant. This is the best thing that anyone's ever built until it comes to selling it and people out, out there in the market are going, well, it's not quite what we want. And there's this immediate, well, but it's the best thing in my eyes. But for someone out there thinking, well, yeah, it's not not quite right. And you see people trying to sell a product, having that challenge between they're out there trying to sell a product and, and offering solutions to a prospect. And then someone internally going, well, actually, we can't build that because we've, we've got this structure and this is our thought process around building it. And immediately you see these conflicts of salespeople selling the world 
<laughs> and then the internal team go, <laughs> no, we can't do that, actually. And um, it immediately throws up some interesting um, issues. But uh, you know, bringing those two people together constructively you know, can, really, can really help understand different perspectives, both inside the business, outside the business, possible client base, et cetera. Yeah. I, think I think it's really interesting when people don't necessarily give time to this to understand the people they've got. Yeah, I mean, the higher context for perfect teams is that we want to create unity. So if you actually start to identify who you've got, what are the gifts they bring, what are the challenges they got, and make everything transparent and visible, well, then you can start to create the dialogue where you bring those different mindsets together. Um, personally, I mean, I'm an engineer by training, so you think I could do the thinking. Well, I can. I can do the thinking. I can do the mathematics. I can do the processing. But inherently, I'm lazy, and I just don't want to bother doing it. So therefore, I'd rather somebody else did all that processing for me so I can go off and create something mm. for them to implement. And But then if I sit in that thinking space, well, <laughs> I need somebody then to go out and create the market for me. So each of these, each of these different domains, each of these different places um, have advantages and disadvantages. And you, you've got to have all, all of them in play to, to, to create cohesion. Mm. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. And I think we're all... In any entrepreneur, myself included, you, you end up knowing what you like and what you're best at, the things that are gonna gonna excite you and therefore you're gonna do them well versus the other things that you can do. You know, anyone can do them, but if you're not into process or you're not into that detail, get someone else to do it and play to your strengths, and someone else can play to their strengths in that in that space as well. Um, and I think it's it's just a super important thing to realize. We I work with a lot of companies where the the founding team or the management have to delegate, and it's like, well, what do you delegate? Well, delegate the stuff you don't enjoy, because there'll be someone out there that probably enjoys that more than you, and can do a wonderful job and leave you to focus on the stuff that you really want to be doing. And I think that's often overlooked in in teams when it comes to you know progressing with more and more people succession planning or or, or fine-tuning the roles and responsibilities of people you know if everyone on the team is able to to play to their strengths and do the things that they enjoy and naturally go to then there's a massive a massive value add there yeah also things change through your career uh, quite often i mean we did some maps in a big uh, big top four accountancy company and we looked at the partners group and we looked at the talent pool and what happens is when you have to, when you're in a doing mode, in other words, think of a firm of accountants with the audit and the tax and the consulting, there's very much a doing, it's very cognitive, it's very much procedural and process oriented. You need lots of people that are going to be in that head space. But when you're actually looking to grow the business, well, it's not so much about doing it, it's almost like the footballer having to hang their boots up and go into management. It's no longer the doing of, it's the actual strategy and plans on creating the infrastructure to take something forward. And so the mindset changes and that's much more about direction and bringing people along. So we find actually there's a natural drift as people progress through their careers from the blue doing to the red and the green creating and um, creating teams, creating direction, creating strategy. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I, I see it. The, the other thing I think is worth talking about, Neil, is yeah, we I think people often miss miss where the focus should be when it comes to um, the the kind of in, internal processes and systems within within um, a company. And and I, I did an example of when I used to work somewhere, we we used to have a or we had a period of having multiple different managers coming in, heading up a particular department. And one, one person came in and was adamant, we're going to process map all our systems and processes and we'll then know what everyone does. And it was a big project and it, it cost a lot of money and took up a lot of time. And I, I'm pretty sure no one ever looked at it afterwards in terms of a, a, a bit of outcome or output that was useful because there's a massive disconnect between who put that together and the people involved. And 
if you're looking at a process that's been mapped out that you're not connected with, it's very difficult to start working as a team to think, oh, how do we improve this? Because, you know, if you imagine the a process divided into, you know, segments, you know, there's people there going, well, I do this bit. I didn't realise you did that. Now I know that I might be able to help because we can shortcut something or we can make make the flow of our info to you better or now i understand the problem i'm causing you we can change something and i think sometimes people miss the trick there in, in actually going well any process that can be improved you've got to have engagement from the people involved and those people would all have different parts to play in one the the process of improving the process if that makes sense but also the, the final process that's better than what you've got now and I think understanding the people and characteristics and different people's approaches to problem solving is a real value that a lot of businesses have and don't successfully tap into. I don't know if, if you, if, if you yeah, resonate with that. I can remember you telling me about that. And I think um, at the time we did a quick calculation that the procedural part, which was probably driven by a management consultancy, was probably about 120,000. If they'd spent 12,000 getting the people part of the equation, right? The 120,000 might have come to something. So that there's like an order of magnitude there, 12,000 to get it right. And so, you know, 120,000, 12, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's a bit of a no brainer. But if the mindset's not that you, if, you, know, you don't have the mindset, you've got to get people engaged and you've got to get people involved, well, then that part just won't happen mm. yeah and i think also you know, it's come up a couple of times recently in conversation you know people like the idea to progress and then you know progress in career and progress in opportunities and just just improving processes taking away things that can be automated or things that can be replaced by tech or just getting rid of stuff that's not value adding frees up time for people to go and do more, either take on more responsibility or create new roles that are more suitable for today rather than tomorrow. You know, the, the change that's happened over the last year and a half to two years, you know, we, we should have different roles in companies. We should have different outlooks. We should have, we should have removed noise that we don't need anymore. And, and that's what people want. They want the ability to, to input into that and figure out, okay, where can I be now? Where can I be next year? Where's my, Where's my involvement in this business going and how can I progress? And that's got to be driven by the people aspect and, and people having the space to, to, to kind of find what they're good at, what they enjoy and, and how that links into the business. Um, yeah, look, what, what we found actually is when, when companies engage with us and they actually then profile, I mean, we do give instant team profiles for businesses. But the moment you've got that instant map and you can actually clarify and see exactly who you've got in your team, you can also see who you're missing. Mm. So if you've got a team that's very internally focused and very cognitively driven, but you've actually got to grow the business, well, it's a different mindset and a different set of people you, you need. But sometimes you've got people in your business that you didn't realise actually they are tailor made to actually go out there. So quite often people, yeah, they might be doing something, but their actual natural tendency would be to be more marketing led, or to be more sales led, or to be more out, you know, customer focused. And you might not know that you've got those gems sitting in, you know, right there in the business. Mm. And yeah, was with, with recruitment fees nowadays, you know, it's so much better if you can find the internal resource. Yeah. You can already be sitting there and put the money into developing as opposed to paying the recruiter to find and bring somebody new in. Yeah, well, I think I think that's a really good point. And I think as, as people do struggle to find good resource, you've got to look under your, under your nose and see what's there. We, we're running out of time for this podcast. We're going to have to bring it. Yeah, to that, was a, that, was a quick, that was a quick 20 but, minutes. But the, the missing piece is quite interesting. So anyone sat there thinking, we're not making the progress I'd want to, and we're going into 2022 shortly, there must be a missing piece. What would be your top tip for them to go and find that missing piece in the team? What would you suggest they go and do? Well, 
perfect teams starts with the individual that leads the team. So the first tip is know yourself, find out about yourself, where do you sit? Then find out where your existing team sits, and then you can actually spot the gaps. And the workshop last week with the European Championships uh, Management, they realized that they're really, they're a massive events company. And the, the actual one character that was missing was the one that says at 11 o'clock, which is a, a strong directive implementer. And actually it, it just shouted out to them that as they grow and move forward and they, they move towards Munich 2022, they need some people with that characteristic that are very hard driven directive implementers. So it, it sent a clear signal of what was missing in the team last week. No, that's good. Well, great. Well, Neil, thanks very much. I've enjoyed talking today. And um, hopefully this has been some useful insights and, and thoughts for, for people listening in. And uh, we'll catch up soon. So thanks very much, Neil. Thanks for inviting me, Rob. Thanks for listening. If you'd like more information about the topics discussed in this podcast, then you can find us on our website at moveyourbusinessforward.com.